Hello, I'm Jonna Manchester, and like Mr. Provenzano said, I'm a senior here at Gross Point South. And I want to talk to you a little bit about popping the bubble, breaking barriers between segregated communities. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what it's like to grow up in Gross Point, a small suburb of Detroit, and how growing up only a few blocks from the city has shaped me into the person I am today. So first of all, there are many stereotypes that surround both Gross Point and Detroit. Gross Point is often thought of as a rich lakefront community with large, lavish homes and yacht clubs which are seen in these pictures that were among the first to pop up when I Google searched Gross Point. And for those of you who are not familiar with the area, it is a largely white community. According to the 2010 census, it is 93% white and only 3% black. And it's also known to be quite secluded from Detroit, I some, uh, which is why many Gross Pointers refer to it as the bubble. I sometimes think of it as Springfield on the, the dome from the Simpsons movie because it's so secluded from the surrounding areas. Detroit, on the other hand, which is 83% African American and 10% white, is often seen from the headlines of newspapers as a bankrupt and crime-ridden city with street after street of burned down houses and vacant automotive plants, which are seen in these pictures that were among the first to pop up in the Google search of Detroit. Now, historically speaking, these representations are true to an extent. In the early 1900s, when the wealthy automotive workers were building up the successful industry in the city, they built lake houses in Gross Point to serve as their sanctuary away from work in the city. But when blacks started to move into the city in search of well-paying jobs on the assembly line, racial tensions arose. In 1940, a six-foot wall that spanned about half a mile, known as the Detroit Eight Mile Wall, was built to separate the white neighborhoods from the black housing areas on the northwest side of Detroit. Though, um, and then in 1967, when the race riots broke out, white flight began, sending many whites outside of the city limits to the surrounding suburbs. From that point on, Detroit experienced a downfall. And um, after that, and so though the eight mile wall no longer stands or no longer serves as a physical barrier, there's still a very distinct border between the two towns. So this is just a screenshot that I took um, on the maps on my computer. And really the divide is so obvious that I didn't even need to add the red line. On the right, you see many trees and houses and populated neighborhoods. On the left, they're mostly they're sparse houses, mostly desolate empty lots. The divide is unfortunate. I witness it every day as I cross the border to go to Belle Isle Park for rowing practice. The lush trees stop, plywood places windows on buildings, and there's an obvious demographic change. So though this picture is worth, like any picture, it's worth a thousand words that describes the difference between the, the two cities, but there's so many thousands of other words that describe the different aspects of the city um, that people don't realize. There's so much more to both cities that people don't recognize because they have their preconceived notions of what lies on the other side of the border. So though there's no longer a physical barrier that separates the two areas, there is a mental barrier. So what we need to do is learn or is break down these mental barriers. And people have been working at that ever since the civil rights era. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. even spoke right here at Gross Point South in 1968. But the segregation still exists and something must be done about it. So some of you may be questioning what I know about the city of Detroit, being that I'm a white teenage girl from the suburbs. But despite being born and raised in the bubble, I've never been shielded from the city. My family and I have spent many Saturday mornings at Eastern Market, um, have, we've volunteered in soup kitchens, and even brave the cold to watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade, as well as utilize the many other um, various activities, museums, and restaurants that showcase the diverse cultures the city has to offer. Um, perhaps it has been these explorations throughout the city that have sparked my interest in racial segregation and the fight against it. But it wasn't until high school that I, finally, that I finally decided to take action by pursuing a more hands-on approach to the city, um, to exploring the city and learning how I can uh, pop the bubble that acts as a barrier between these two towns. It's been through these experiences that I've learned that the reason 
there is segregation between races, religions, and cultures is because there's a lack of familiarity and a lack of knowledge of what lies on the other side of the border. So it was through a program called Generation of Promise that I um, began to change my perspective of what lies on the other side of the border. So Generation of Promise is a program through a Detroit-based organization called Focus Hope. It um, is for a few high school juniors from approximately 15 different schools in the metro Detroit area. And it selects these students um, based on their, um, their interest in leadership and changing the world around them. And it exposes these young leaders to different issues and cultures that reside in and around Detroit and helps them learn to disprove common stereotypes. So we can create a more blended and inclusive community. And I was fortunate enough to have been chosen to participate in this program that generally changed my perspective of the world around me. So we started off the year-long program with a retreat during the summer. The 60 of us went to a YMCA camp where we did various team building and leadership activities. Um, though I was very excited to make new friends, at the beginning of the weekend, I was very nervous because I was surrounded by all of these people that I had never met before. But as the weekend went on, I got to know others and we had a lot of fun. There was one program in particular that really began to change my perspective as the, continu as the program would continue to do throughout the year with each program day. It was called Share Your Story. We split up into our family groups. Mine was called Greater by the Dozen, or GB12. Um, that's us in the top picture. And so we split into our family groups and we sat around in a circle and we shared a defining moment in our lives, something that had shaped us into the person we were that day. But though, so though we we're supposed to share a previous defining moment in our lives, I think it was that moment sitting in that circle that has been the most defining moment in my life to this day. Not only did I learn a lot about myself and make a tremendous stride by conquering my fear of opening up to others, um, I learned a lot about the others in my group and I made a significant realization. So as I had mentioned before, at the beginning of the weekend, I was very nervous. And as I realized later, when people are nervous um, or in an unfamiliar situation, they tend to judge those around them. And which is exactly what I did. And believe me, I consciously tried not to with the whole purpose of the program in mind, but I couldn't help but look at someone and come to a conclusion about them based on how they looked, what they were wearing, or how they acted. But as I was sitting in that circle, listening to the life stories of each of those people, my initial assumptions about each person could not have been more wrong. So it was from that moment on that I began to look at people in a different way. And, and also another experience I had with Generation of Promise is um, a part of the program is shadowing a student from a different school for a day. So I was paired with a girl from Cass Technical High School and she wears a hijab, which is the scarf Muslim women wear to cover their hair. And I've never really been exposed to the Muslim religion. And, but now, thanks to Generation of Promise and spending a day with her, I can now confidently say I know a little bit about it. And not to mention that I even know the scarf they wear is called a hijab, which I'm sure many of my friends don't know. Um, so that really opened my eyes and that experience really proved to me that gaining a little bit of exposure to different things really helps make you more comfortable and it helps you look at people in a different way even if they're different than you you can really look past those differences and recognize a person for who they are so one of the most meaningful experiences i had with volunteering in detroit um, came about in the spring of my freshman year when my dad proposed the idea of coaching baseball through an organization called Eagle Sports Club. Given that I played baseball for five years, I have a passion for teaching, and I had a bit of experience coaching rowing, I considered it. Well, the next thing I knew, I found myself alongside my dad in front of 15, six, seven, and eight-year-olds at Balduck Park in Detroit. Now, I was bit uncomfortable and a little skeptical 
given that I was in an unfamiliar surrounding and I was in charge of teaching these little kids how to play baseball. So I started practice off with a few minutes of catch, similar to how my coaches commenced practice when I played. But I soon realized that this game of catch was more so a game of chase. And I was, as practice continued, I was not feeling very optimistic about the upcoming season. I realized that these kids knew little to nothing about baseball. So we definitely had a work cut out for us. And overall, coaching was definitely a challenge. But one day I realized that I wasn't there to teach these kids how to play baseball. Rather, I was there, for, I was there to be someone that they could look up to, someone that they could count on to be there every Thursday and Saturday for practices and games. Um, most of these kids came from the inner city. Some didn't come from the best home lives. But with a little assurance that my dad and I were there for them and a little help appreciating the little victories they made, uh, they were able to open up and display their happy, bubbly selves. Uh, there was one boy in particular who continually struggled with catching the ball. So I took it upon myself to work with him during every practice and before every game, determined that he would catch the ball. And as we were warming up for the last game of our season, he finally managed to capture the ball in his glove. And I'll never forget that day when I ran over to give him a high five, he ducked under my arm and gave me a hug. It was from that moment on that I truly developed a passion for helping these kids. And like I said before, some of them didn't come from the best home lives and knowing that we could be there to support them and help them out, even if it was just in the slightest way, it gave me a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment knowing that I, a teenage girl from the suburbs, could help them. Um, so aside from the personal satisfaction I gained from these two summers of coaching, it really taught me a lot about Detroit. Um, I was able to look at the city in a different way. Um, there was a great sense of community. So many families came out on these Saturdays to watch their kids play baseball. And it really changed my perspective of the city because it's often thought of as a desolate, bankrupt, and crime-ridden city. Um, but once you actually go into the city and you see, you see that there's such a great sense of community and there are all of these people that are willing to help out and um, make it a better city than people see it. Um, this opportunity also helped me look at these people at a, in a different way. Though the kids on our baseball team and I look very different on the outside, we come from different areas, have, been, have experienced different things, and live in different ways, we are all human. This opportunity really allowed me to override my first impressions of others and recognize a person for who they are, which is what truly matters. Um, so through these, through these opportunities, I was able to realize the reason for um, segregation between races, religions, and cultures. And I realized that when people are unfamiliar in a situation, they often tend to judge others. And that's because they have a lot, there's a lack of knowledge. But if we expose ourselves to the other to people that are different than us and other communities, we can gain knowledge and become more comfortable in, um, in other surroundings. So I encourage you, um, I wish everyone could experience the things I did because I really learned a lot from these different opportunities. So I encourage you to go out and immerse yourself and I promise that you will gain a new perspective of the world, just as I did, so the world can pop its bubbles and instead be composed of blended communities. Thank you.